We are we're relieved and we're really celebrating this fantastic milestone. I'm here at JFK and you can see the buzz behind me. So it's very exciting. It's a day that we thought would come sooner, but after 604 days not being able to travel to the US, we're delighted to be back. And as an airline that is so reliant on transatlantic travel, do you feel hard done by it over the course of the last couple of years? I guess on two fronts. On, on, on one, the UK government hasn't given you anywhere near as much support as the US government has given some of your US rivals. And on top of that, the way in which the US government has not allowed you to travel with British passengers uh, on this route for so long. Well, yes, I think, you know, we have had to fight very hard. And, uh, you know, the fact that the market wasn't open, I think it was a missed opportunity. We would have hoped around G7 and Cornwall that we would have opened up the US and we missed the summer. But we're looking forward now and we're very encouraged by what we're seeing. I think uh, the bookings are strong, the excitement is there and people really want to get back travelling to the US again. Um, in terms of support, you know, again, that's a political process. I think we've knuckled down, we've worked hard to stay resilient and now we're about rebuilding the airline. And, and how is it feeling? Have you seen a massive uplift in demand? We, we've seen a significant uplift in demand. Uh, I think since the announcement three weeks ago, all segments have been booking strongly, including the corporate segment, which is booking late. But again, the evidence that corporates are back out travelling is becoming more pronounced as the days go by. That's really interesting. I mean, clearly everyone would have expected a flurry for, for this week and next week as, as the, uh, the terms changed, as it were. But do you expect that demand to be prolonged and, as you're suggesting, uh, significant in the business area or is still tilted towards leisure? Well, I think we're looking at what happened in other markets that opened up, like the US, and we did see probably a recovery which confounded some of the more uh, pessimistic analysts. And we are hoping to see that as well in Europe. We've got to remember that people haven't been travelling for close to two years, and I think there's a lot of business that needs to be done, a lot of value in meeting face-to-face, -face, and a lot of time and relationships to kind of make up and restore. And, you know, that's what we're hearing, and that's what we're seeing as the bookings begin to come in. But things like the premium leisure market is very strong and has been booking ahead of 2019 for the last three weeks. And, of course, what you see behind us, which is lots of people reuniting with family and friends. You know, there's a million British people living in the United States, and uh, we think that that pent-up demand is significant. I, I, I do know that, Sean, indeed. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, on, on the prospect of demand picking up significantly, are you being able to match that with staffing and supply, or are you facing similar labour shortages that, that your industry is facing here in the US? Well, you know, as of today now, we're flying to 17 cities in the US, and we'll build that to 23 by December. And we'd hope to restore the vast majority of all the cities that we used to serve in summer 19 by summer 22. So, you know, at the minute we're, we're building and we have the capacity to rebuild, and, um, you know, that's something that we're, we're working through. But, um, we want to restore our leadership position on the North Atlantic quickly, and, and that's what we're focused on as, we, as things stand today. In a weird way, is it possible that in years to come uh, that the pandemic will have prof proved to be a slight positive for British Airways in that we have seen a dramatic reduction in capacity? Uh, and, uh, and, and will you be able to capitalise on that and, and in a couple of years' time? Will you have more market share than you had in 2019? But I think what we've done is seize the opportunity of the pandemic to, to make some big decisions. We retired our 747s and we're replacing them with aircraft which are more efficient and more sustainable. The A350-1000 we flew today was about 40% more efficient in terms of emissions and we powered it with 35% sustainable aviation fuel. We've also invested in technology and continued to modernise the airline. So I think regardless of the macro environment, you know, we will come out of the pandemic a better airline, a more efficient airline and a more sustainable airline. Specifically on the transatlantic route, are you, are you threatened by JetBlue? It's been rare to have a, a fresh entrant in that specific market for, for quite a while. Yeah. Well, look, I, I think we'd always take any new entrant seriously. And, uh, you know, JetBlue are a very well-known brand uh, and a strong airline. At the same time, I think the capacity JetBlue had this summer is about 1% of the overall market. So it's early days, but we're confident that if we deliver on the things that we have in our plans, that we will compete very effectively. Were you disappointed with your partner, American Airlines, uh, establishing a fresh partnership with JetBlue? 
No, but I, I think that was a partnership that we would have supported. And uh, American Airlines are here today as part of uh, the welcoming party, and that partnership is as strong as ever. So I think the JetBlue relationship, you know, complements what, what American have to offer. Uh, I wanted to touch on, on the UK energy crisis and, and whether uh, that is something that's hitting you as well or as a global company and, and clearly with uh, a footprint everywhere, whether you're able to, to get around that. Yeah, but look, I think our supply chains are up and running and we're rebuilding the business. And, and I do think that, you know, you may have heard reports of, of some queues for, for gasoline in the UK four weeks ago, but that's not the case anymore. So I think a lot of people are seeing teething problems in supply chains. I think we're focused on working through those teething problems as quickly as we can. And some of the issues that were relevant four or five weeks ago are, are, are now beginning to abate. Uh, and just finally, uh, Sean, just wanted to touch on, on how you see that transatlantic relationship in, in a business sense. Do you think that it has been damaged by things like Brexit or the pandemic, or, or, or do you think business is raring to get back together again? Well, look, I think businesses always find a way around issues. And, you know, the U.S. is the single biggest foreign direct investor into the U.K. I think the U.K. might be the fourth biggest investor into the U.S. So I think, you know, that's a huge, uh, you know, bedrock of the relationship. Uh, and I think, you know, on the back of that, we'll find ways of doing business. We'll find ways of growing the relationship. And British Airways wants to be very much part of that.